One of the first questions uh, a lot of people ask is, do we get enough sun in Ohio? Everyone seems to think that we live in a very cloudy state. And uh, the, the correct response is right away is that uh, Germany, the country of Germany, uh, has the most installed solar capacity in the entire world. And uh, the country of Germany gets 25% less sunlight per year than we do here in Ohio. So if Germany can have the most installed capacity but get less sun, uh, and they make solar work really well for them, we certainly can make it work for us here in Ohio. So as far as installation and setup goes, uh, we've been pretty lucky. Everything's in at this point, which I think is saying something that we got it all in and then we got it all functioning um, before we need to leave for DC. A lot of teams don't pull that off. Right now we're testing things. We're trying to get the final details set up. Um, it's, it's definitely taken longer than expected and we've used our professional contacts, um, the suppliers, the distributors, engineers um, from industry all around Columbus and Ohio have really helped us out um, getting everything to work and to work well. Um, so that's been a big part of our installation process. Uh, so today we're actually installing the solar panel racks and the solar panels. Um, we spent all morning tightening down the racks and getting everything ready and then this afternoon um, we put the panels on the roof, unloaded them from the pallets um, and, and started bolting them onto the racks. Uh, we're tightening them down, we're getting all the angles set, getting it ready um, to test the system um, in a few weeks. So the interesting thing about the racks and why we picked them is that they're completely adjustable horizontally along the roof as well as the angle. So if you look over here, um, each rack is bolted um, to this unistra and we can actually move this rack horizontally along the roof um, to any one of these holes. Um, the other trick to that is that these legs are sliders, so these extend and um, shorten uh, based on what angle we want to put these at and we have several different holes that we can change the telescoping leg to attach to. So really these racks are just completely flexible so no matter where we take this house, be it Columbus or DC, um, we're going to be able to put them at the optimum angle for solar collection. How our system works is we have these solar panels which are actually double sided meaning that they collect light from the front and the back which increases their production up to 30 percent um, but these solar panels consist of individual cells so each of these little squares that you see here is an individual solar cell that's generating electricity. Um, these cells all add together in sets of series in parallel and it basically the solar panel becomes a big battery. Um, it's a DC power um, so it acts just like a battery. Um, all these panels wired together then head to the inverter and the inverter converts that to alternating current, AC current, which is what your house is going to use. Um, so that's how the house um, is powered is um, from these batteries, you know, from the panels acting as batteries to the inverter and the inverter then converts that to usable energy for the house. So in layman terms, this panel here is going to power everything in your home, your appliances, your washer, your dryer, your refrigerator, your lights, your computer, your TV, everything is going to be powered um, from sets of these solar panels, um, which is a renewable energy power source that, that costs nothing once the installation is up. So you'll find two types of solar houses. Um, that have solar panels generating their electricity. Um, one is off-grid, so that means it has batteries that store the solar power that produces. And then there's grid-tied systems, which is really where the future of residential electricity is going. Um, grid-tied systems have an inverter that interfaces with the electrical grid. So your, your AEPs, your Duke Energies of the world um, that produce your power that goes to your standard home, they're able to accept any excess electricity that you produce from your system. Um, on the flip side, on a gray cloudy day like today, you could also pull energy from the grid if you didn't have enough. So it's like the perfect storage element that you can pull and feed from the grid whenever you need to. Okay, so we have two ways that we're harnessing the power of the sun on our house. Um, you can see them behind me. We actually have the solar panels 
And then we also have a solar hot water heating system that uses evacuated tubes, um, which is a great method for cooler climates. Uh, and you can see them up in the far corner of the roof. We also have another set on the front of the house. Um, the solar hot water heater actually supplies hot water for both um, domestic use, so your shower, your sink, your kitchen, um, laundry, all of those fixtures and appliances. Um, as well as for heating. Um, we have a radiant floor heating system, so we have a tubing that runs in the subflooring um, that can be used to heat the house as well. Um, so we're using the sun in a lot of ways um, to power and heat and various other things for our house. So the home automation system has a convenient interface located in the main space. We have a touch screen set up where you can access all of the settings and controls and information about your home. Um, so you can see here, this is just the main home page for the house. Um, and you can look at the temperature of the home, um, how much power we're generating, how much power we're consuming, um, how much uh, the light level is what the weather's like outside so you can kind of compare. Um, and you can also look at other particular aspects of your house, like your um, HVAC. So this page shows you all of the temperatures in the various zones of the home, what temperature air is coming directly out of the split system heat pumps, um, what the temperature is outside again, whether you want to open your windows as opposed to turning on the air conditioner. Um, and then after you've looked at all this information and really processed it and understood it, you can then go and make changes to your system to improve your energy efficiency um, of your house. My understanding and my perspective of just energy and energy use in general has really changed and evolved. I really notice now when I'm using energy, like in my home, I am obsessive compulsive about shutting lights off now because it's such a waste. And there are so many ways that you can do little things to conserve energy. And I think too, in any future engineering job I have, whatever it may be, I'm really gonna see, you know, how can we improve the manufacturing process so that it's more efficient? How can we, you know, use less energy in this process so that it's more efficient? Because there's a lot of things that you can do that people just don't consider because it's not an important part of their engineering process, but that should definitely change. And I know it's changed for me. Um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how that affects how I do work in the future as an engineer.